Good day, here are the headlines from the Philippine News Agency. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. announced numerous gains in trade and investments on the first day of his working visit in Germany. The president encouraged German business leaders to invest in the Philippines as he expressed confidence in the stronger ties between the two countries. Marita Mahe has the story. The Philippines has secured at least $4 billion worth of investments during President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s working visit to Germany. The president announced this in a Facebook post this morning. According to the Presidential Communications Office, the Philippines received a letter of intent to develop a partner hospital and training center for lower-tier hospitals. Another LOI is for developing an innovation think tank hub and spoke model to develop an inclusive innovation ecosystem in the Philippines. The third LOI is for the strategic and digital partnership in healthcare with the Department of Health. The Philippines also received two memoranda of agreement and three memoranda of understanding for various sectors including farmland rehabilitation, software, energy, security, automobile manufacturing and investment in a fully integrated solar cell manufacturing facility. The investment deals were made during the Philippine-German Business Forum in Berlin organized by the Department of Trade and Industry. In a speech, President Marcos urged German business leaders to continue investing in the Philippines as he assured the country is a reliable partner. Marcos highlighted purposeful reforms made through key legislation to further drive economic development. He mentioned the Maharlika Investment Fund, the sovereign wealth fund created to finance priority projects, driving socio-economic impact. The president likewise emphasized the government's progress in streamlining business processes, such as the establishment of green lanes for strategic investments and simplified procedures for opening businesses. He thanked Germany for its continuing confidence in the Philippines as a partner in the Asia-Pacific and the ASEAN region. Marcos is the first Philippine president in 10 years to address German business leaders. I invite esteemed German business leaders to continue to keep in mind the Philippines as a reliable partner that can support your market expansion and your operations. We remain steadfast in our commitment to purposeful reforms, evident in key legislative amendments. President Marcos also expressed his optimism towards Germany during his bilateral meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz at the Federal Chancellery in Berlin. In a joint statement, Marcos said the Philippines and Germany would have stronger and deeper ties in trade and investment, labor and maritime cooperation. He expressed the country's interest in collaborating with Germany in the areas of manufacturing, construction and infrastructure, information technology and business process management, innovation and startups, and renewable energy and minerals processing. Marcos and Schultz also reaffirmed their commitment to promoting the rules-based international order in response to the territorial issues in the South China Sea. They also discussed the importance of cooperation to mitigate the impact of climate change. The Philippines and Germany are celebrating this year the 70th anniversary of their diplomatic relations. For the PNA Headlines, I am Marita Moahe. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. underscored anew the need to maintain the safe passage in the South China Sea for a robust international trade. During his bilateral meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Marcos said a free and open waterway benefits not just the Philippines. He said the South China Sea handles 60% of international commerce, making the area an interest not only of ASEAN, 
or the Indo-Pacific region but the entire world. Marx noted that China's intrusion on the Philippines' exclusive economic zone has worried nations because of the increased tensions in the disputed waters. He said the Philippine government questioned China's premise of a 10-dash line which claims a large part of the South China Sea, adding that the claim is not recognized by any other country. For his part, Schultz underscored the importance of upholding international law, particularly laws that govern international navigation such as the UNCLOS. Schultz said Germany also expressed its support for the Philippines in ensuring that its rights are being protected. The Philippines and Germany signed a deal to train Filipino workers in digitalization and the green economy. According to Malacanang, the Renewal of Cooperation Program between the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, and the Federal Institute for Vocational Education and Training aimed at upskilling and reskilling all Filipino workers. The deal was signed during President Ferdinand R. Morgus Jr.'s three-day working visit to Berlin, Germany. In a statement, Communication Secretary Cheloy Garofil said the agreement involves implementing capacity-building measures like yearly thematic visits and that both TESDA and the Federal Institute for Vocational Education and Training will offer cost-free workplace and technical resources. Gadevil also mentioned other efforts such as sharing policy, research, and knowledge management, assisting in evaluating apprenticeship and dual training programs, and supporting the enhancement of the study of employment of Tibet graduates. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz underscored the opportunities for Filipinos in the German labor market following recent legislative reforms aimed at easing the entry of foreign workers. He also commended a partnership program as a means to promote upskilling and reskilling of Filipino workers and strengthen labor cooperation between the two countries. Several parts of the country are experiencing cloudy skies with isolated rains due to the shear line and prevailing northeast monsoon or Amihan and the Surlis. Pagasa said the shear line will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Isabela, Carino, Aurora, and the northern portion of Quezon. The Cordillera region and the rest of Cagayan Valley will experience cloudy skies with light rains due to the northeast monsoon. The Aminan will likewise bring partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rains over a locust region and the rest of central Luzon. On the other hand, Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms brought by the easterlies and localized thunderstorms. Moderate to strong winds and moderate to rough seas will prevail over Luzon besides in the eastern sections of Mindanao. The rest of Mindanao will have light to moderate winds and slight to moderate seas. The National Book Development Board, or NBDB, plans to enhance the country's industry development initiatives at the London Book Fair. The statement, NBDB Chairman of Board Dante Francis Ang II stressed the importance of the event, noting it is one of the premier events in the publishing world. He said the NBDB will simplify the trade development plan of the Philippines in English-speaking and diasporic regions, as well as its availability in digital and physical retail locations. This year, the NBDB returns to the London Book Fair to promote the sale of rights for Filipino authored titles for global distribution and adaptation. Among their offerings are works by renowned Filipino authors such as national artist Ricky Lee and award-winning novelist Gina Apostol. The selection includes new contemporary fiction from different regions, novels about queer coming-of-age experiences, and modern interpretations of folklore and mythology. Likewise, the NBDB is getting ready to join the 2025 Frankfurt Book Fair as a guest of honor to boost the country's international presence in South. East Asia. The London Book Fair is scheduled from March 12 to 14 at the Olympia Exhibition Center in the United Kingdom. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, please visit our website pna.gov.ph or our Facebook account and X account Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicia Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines 
through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account via the News and Information Bureau website nib.gov.ph under the PNA News or on the Facebook page of the Presidential Communications Office or PCO. I'm Stephanie Civiliano and this is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories to unite the nation.